got another Star Trek Playmates toy for your unboxing, but this is a massive, massive error. Hi guys, Retro Trek Ralph here, one of the Star Trek Playmates unboxing video. Probably 20 odd years too late, but never mind. This is... This is quite a rare one. I had the Enterprise D from Star Trek Generations ages ago. It's the wrong colour, it was the right shape, it was everything was wrong but right about at the same time. But it was the Enterprise B. Love the Enterprise B. Brilliant ship. Love the Excelsior more. However, alright, alright. I, I can't describe how bad but good this actually is because we never saw the Excelsior upgraded. Now, you can think that the Excelsior was um, in 80... 20, 81, 85, something like that, that was brought in. The refit version, which was the Enterprise B, came out for generations, which was the late, very late 23rd century. It's not saying that this couldn't have been, it's just it's lazy, very lazy work by just putting different stickers on on this but the problem with this this is now super rare to find this <sighs> I mean it shouldn't actually have been Kirk as a picture in front of here it should have been um, Captain Harriman but never mind so this is collector's edition 2488 so it's quite a low number box so it, it's not in the best of conditions it doesn't have any innards all the cardboard should I say inside nice overview on there as well but let me get into the classic enterprise is there we've, we've done the video for that already I do have I'm sure I have the playmates phaser I don't have a tricorder so let's get into this right so we have hmm now there's a problem they've not fully put the stickers on and we have a base as well but if you remember the enterprise 1701 video this is Going to come into its own in a second or two. This is obviously second hand, you can't buy these brand new. So we have, yeah, are these proper or these not? We've already got stickers curling up already on here. This comes in two parts star drive, sort of built up section. It is a shame that they did do with the stickers on this, it's a bit dirty underneath. We'll have to do something with that. We also have the stand and no innards, no packaging or anything, so this will go back in the box, bubble wrapped, for storage sake. Unlike the Enterprise, the Playmates, the 1701, which came with a stand, which it's very much similar to this, slides in, clicks into place, like, oh, like that should, but it hasn't. Um, this comes with a, a different base where the actual battery compartment came off, but there must have been production errors that this is a lot more secure to go on by having a base attached to the stand or a spare base so you can attach it to the bottom and use it as a display only. So, I'll get it out and show you, because that will go underneath there. Normally, I would have said this should have been a battery compartment because it is on, on the Enterprise D. So that will go cover over, not the easiest thing to do. But never understood if that was actually shuttle bay or why there's a big gap there. Shuttle bay, that should be the shuttle bay because they look like doors. Yeah, looks like the guy, the original owner of this, has never actually put the underneath stickers on. Now let me get round to the, the cells. They just push in place. It's a shame that it is a nice model. It is pretty good. It is does need cleaning certain bits on sticker work. This is actually the proper colour of the model. It was kind of like a, a... It doesn't glow in the dark, although it does look like it should glow in the dark. And why is that dish not on properly? The bottom part here not properly. There's a lip over there. That's quite weird. So, this would light up in three places. There, there, and there. And anybody who knows Star Trek knows that there isn't a red navigation deflector on this, it was blue. These parts were obviously built onto the Excelsior model to make the Enterprise B, so you wouldn't damage the original model underneath. So this was the, spoiler alert, for um, yeah, film from 1994. These parts were damaged to actually 
kill Kirkhoff, or they appear to kill Kirkhoff. So he would, yeah, give him a final hurrah, shall we say, hurrah, but came back by the Nexus. But these were, were damaged, so you wouldn't do the, damage the original model, which is worth quite a bit. So we need to look at, while I'm here, let's look at the instructions and the stickers. Like I said, the stickers have already been done. These ones have already been completed. So it's all this stuff in the middle here, the grey squares, eight squares there, circles, squares, blue bits, curved bits, phaser banks, and the underneath registry number. I don't think there's an Excelsior. I would have thought there might have been one under here, but there isn't. Not on this model at least, anyway. So I've got a little bit of playing around to do. What gets me with this is that should have been the battery compartment, although it's just a, a bit to put the stand on, which is weird. The battery compartment is actually up here. So, yeah, which is quite strange because it is bang underneath where that is, but you do need three. So that's four and a half volts, which is LED um, voltage. So what I need to do for the time being is put batteries in, give it a bit of clean up, and then we'll see if this works. Now I've got to go, th go through the instructions of what these stickers actually are. So we have, I don't understand, number 10. Number 10 goes around the top. It goes around here where it's already been painted in. So I will put that in, but it, it must be just an emphasis on where it's already been sprayed blue, which is a bit odd. We've got 18s which go, I think they go along the back of here, because there's, there's parts of the impulse engine, there's the four squares or the top of the extra impulse engines. There's two Excelsior names, which, right, I think you have to decide, because one of them goes underneath here, right on the back of here, because I've got an underneath picture of the Lakota, which is what this turned, they rebadged it for the Lakota with Deep Space Nine. It goes on the back of here, it also goes on here as well, or it goes on the back of here. So you've got to decide which one it goes on of these two, because you've only got two. I mean, it does need one over the back of here, but it also needs one sharing between either one of these. So it'll probably be on that one more than the stand. So also, if you've not, if you might have noticed on the back of here as well, it's put, whoever's well, original owners put all the NCC 1701s on the pylon ones, top and bottom. These don't go top and bottom. These go top there, yes, but they also go on the insides as well. So they just need unsticking and putting inside there. I'm also gonna have a problem with this a little bit. If I take any stickers off, like those have to come off, is the sticky might not work. It's like underneath here where these triangle parts are, it's lifted up right inside there. I need to stick those down as well. But if I use PVA, that probably won't work. It, these are just really thick tape. I mean, I've actually done tried peeling this part off here, which has not really worked that well. I mean, it is kind of dirty. It does need a... It looks like it's been... Dirt's got underneath, because it's not flush to the bodywork, because all the lines are on here, of kind of the dirt's got underneath it a little bit. So it's not as perfect as I was hoping, but it is still a very rare model. I've got the ones on here, I've got 16 which go on the thrusters, the four thrusters on here. Um, I think 17, oh no, 15, sorry, are the phaser banks which go on top of here, there's five of them. And for some reason, if you look at this, these here, number sevens, are the phaser banks underneath. There's more detail than the 15s, which is quite weird. So the rest of these are just like trim pieces that which go round this I, I'm not thought it was a sensor sensor area, but there's lots of dots which go on here anyway. So it's not too too bad. And the NCC goes, I don't fully know. Right, so you've got this bit here. I, I would need to look at the Lakota which I've got. I think there's one, two, I think it might be the third ring in. So it might be this blue one. Although this blue panel's in the wrong place. It's it's it, it is it's fine. It is a kid's toy. These are perfectly fine for what the what they are. I mean, there's, there's more than enough detail work on this. I'm trying to have an Excelsior. I mean, yes, we would have had this upgraded to this because this is the way the Excelsior's went. Although, all right, time-wise, the next generation came out before this model was actually 
thought of. So the Next Generation first episode had the USS HUD, which was an Excelsior class, making the Excelsior one of the longest serving class of ships in the fleet. But when um, Generations came around, they made this with the um, different nacelles, the more, I'd say they're more like, like spy, like I'd say like Centurion or something, a Spartan or something, I don't know. They look really oddball, but made it more lit up instead of the nacelles being dark all the time. Extra engines, extra parts, just parts that would actually be destroyed in the film. Nowadays, CGI stuff is, is a lot easier than doing that. But it isn't a bad detailed model to be honest this it's not I'm not uh, uh, the biggest bit that gets me is all this I mean, how many have we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven for the saucer one two three and that's a different screw four five six seven eight nine less than, and then another three on each pylon it's screw heavy I mean I could get colors and put them in that would deface it a little bit I'm trying not to deface any of these but it looks it does look a ruddy mess with these. So let me get the stickers on and try and clean this up a little bit more. It's not going to come back to its its original, I'm sure. There's lots of bits on this that are just properly ground onto it. Not retro writing needed, which is lucky. But like I said, the colour of this is quite weird. That It kind of looks like it's a glow-in-the-dark colour, and it isn't. There was more white to this original model, but ah, before I do that... I'll put the batteries in. Let's go through some um, lovely little noises. So, aha, our batteries on it didn't work. So they did work before, but they didn't know it now. So yeah, let me give, give me a second, a quick cut, and we'll get this working. And like an idiot, I put one of the batteries upside down. So let's go through the noises to start with. Four buttons on here. So we've got. <laughs> I think that might be the noise of the Nexus. I'm sure it was the Nexus sound, but why would the ship make that noise? Red alert. Twice, apparently. And the engines flash on the back. Third one. That sounds like a phaser. And then. Tractor beam. So you can see the lights on the back of there to the actual impulse engines. There's also, while well, a helicopter flies over the top, this red light on the front. Good. My original one that I had, which was the Enterprise B, I changed that bulb. I changed it for a blue bulb and it looks a lot better. Why they didn't, I don't know. I think the prices of LEDs were a lot more expensive back in the 90s than they are now, but you'd have put one in just for production sake. Noises come out the front here from the neck. These two torpedo launchers are, and the hole in the top here anyway. So I don't know whether the. No, I don't think they do. Let me try. No. Everything's from this top part up here. Torpedo launchers are just left holes as they are. Like the back end and the... I think this has got to be a cargo hatch. But it, it's so open. It, it, I don't get the actual original model design. I need some blueprints. And I think I'm going to start getting some blueprints for the starships. There are, there are There's ones that they used to get out years ago before these were all full cannon ones. I think it was the, the class, these ones are the Ingram class. I'm going to get some of those. They're on eBay at the moment. So let me sticker this, de-sticker, remove, re-put, clean up a bit and let's see this as it should be. So some time later, this is now uh, provisionally done, shall we say. All the stickers in the place. I don't fully understand why I didn't put the stickers on these bits underneath the phaser banks. Yeah, these phaser banks look shockingly bad. They're just stickers and the thrusters are... <laughs> this could have been cut a bit better on them. I mean, I'll show you up close here. Look. I mean, yeah, it looks okay. Yeah, the thrusters... I probably could have done with another thruster on front. I would have guessed that. But... Put these squares on. There aren't, I thought these were individual squares. They're all four in a row. It's one sticker, so that's really, really, really easy to do. 
band across here just makes this blue stand out as, as going. We've got two-tone blue, just the outer edge, which is... It was two pieces, actually. But there is a join right under... If you can see that or not. Yeah, just right at the front there's a join, but I could cut that out. But it's it's actually fine for display work. It's not too bad. Yeah, they've got problems with bubbles under here. I need to find out how I can actually repair this properly. But also... Underneath here, these I can't stick these down so much because I need to look into what type of glue is appropriate for these. So at the minute they're staying as they are, raised. I can't do anything with them. I don't. I don't think PVO work. Super glues right out. So it's it, it's. I don't want to rush into this to try and stick these down. They're just stickers. I don't put cell tape over everything. Although it is that type of adhesive. I put the NCC two thousand on the right parts now so these are okay a little bit lift in the corner but again I could do with investigating how to get these sort of old stickers they are quite thick vinylish sort of stickers to get these actually put down so we'll have a look underneath this is one without the stand so underneath it here I put a nice little excelsior on the bottom part there thrusters underneath this bit so this bit will come off and replaced by the stand which doesn't have anything on so the NCC 2000 along the side here, they stayed where they were. Again, I said that one there is stuck in pretty well. It is quite weird how it's just, it's not flat, these parts. There's a there's a lip underneath there. So underneath, on the saucer part, you can see there, everything's in place. The phaser banks do look better on this. So I could have been, I could have done a lot better by just using these on the top. But all these again, I thought these were individual squares. They're not, the bigger one there, big ones there smaller ones are there, but they're all just one sticker. So this is just six stickers going around. Another Excelsior sticker there, phaser banks all the way around. And yeah, I'm quite happy with this. So it does need a bit of a touch up, a clean, a fettle, a potential, do I, where's the buttons? Do I get rid of that? and put a blue LED in it. It does work, I have done it before. It's just unscrewing the bottom here, taking the LED out and putting a new one in. It is very, very easy to do. Hmm. So, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not quite sure either whether or not this part here goes there or a bit further, maybe the next one down. The actual studio model actually has. I've got it in front of me. There's a band, a thin band before this blue trough area. A thin band of, of, of panels, then it's the second one in. This is, ex this is, as it's not, there's two and then it goes in. So you've got to then judge it exactly how it's going to go. So you have guess for the middle, which is there. So it, it's, it does fit with these band in here. Tiny bit I had to cut off over here. But other than that, it does seem to, to fit rather well. So I'm relatively happy with this. Actually, one thing I want to show you before I end the video is the box. <sighs> right, can you see it? Nope. There's no stickers, there's no register number on this. But if you look carefully, and I'll put the box down so it doesn't wobble much. <sighs> they didn't change. This is the Enterprise. This is the Excelsior. So, yeah. <laughs> it is silly. I mean, I'll, I'll probably one day get an Enterprise B and compare these side by side. But there's, actually, there's no real point because they're exactly the same. So, is there a point in comparing them? It's just different stickers. I guarantee you it's different stickers. This was the rarer one. This is what I think, I, I, I assume, they decided... Actually, that's a point. Yeah, energy ribbon. The Excelsior didn't see an energy ribbon that was the Enterprise B. Okay. So they did, they did, but they didn't do this right. So, Ray, it's a nice collector's anyway. I do like having this as part of the set. So, with that in mind, I'm gonna reach over here from board. We're done. We're done just, it's, it's a gentle little restoration with, with thought of potentially a lot more. If there are ever any companies out there that do stickers for these, I could rip all of these off clean this so thoroughly and touch up quite a lot of areas maybe well it'd be impossible to actually light these as a completely block everything and then unblock where the lights are on here there's also these bits here on the Lakota would glow 
on the front of the nacelles, the Bussard collectors, but they didn't on the actual Excelsior slash Enterprise B model. But it would be nice if I could find some stickers that would go on these uh, decals, decals, I don't know what you call them. It, it's, it would be nice to, to redo these with something proper instead of shiny stickers like they are. But again, this is a kid's toy. This was what 1995 brought us for um, Star Trek toys. Nowadays, it seems to have stopped again, but never mind. Well, I'm sure we'll get a resurgence, resurgence pretty much soon enough anyway. So please like, share and subscribe. Follow me on social media. Consider being a Patreon. Consider donating to the channel. And I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.